folks, how are you doing? Welcome to Martin's Kitchen here up in Ravelstown. Hope everybody's keeping well. Um, today I'm going to do, it's a, it's a starter, uh, just a ghost cheese phyllo red onion tart. It's not really a tart, it's just a beef phyllo basket filled with ghost cheese and red onion. Uh, and I'm going to serve it with just different things. I have sort of a pickle my own beetroot, um, fennel that I've sort of got in the garden, spring onions, tomatoes, a bit of salad. Uh, two dressings with it, just a sort of creme fraiche dressing and then a wee olive oil dressing. Uh, but the main part is the sort of ghost cheese and red onion tart. So I'll just wash my hands first just to make sure. So we'll just get started with the sort of the main thing, we'll put this in the oven. So again, phyllo, just already rolled. It's, and all you need is just one sheet for this. One sheet is plenty. And if you're working with phyllo, you need to sort of work pretty quickly uh, because it does dry out. So we'll just, that's the one sheet, and we'll just wrap this up because if you don't, you can put a damp cloth over it, but if you're just using the one sheet, just wrap it up. Get it back in the package. So that's. That's your pastry. So what I'm going to do now, just this spray, it's an olive oil spray, just give it a, a really light spray and then fold it over. Give it another really light spray, not too much. Fold it over. So that's four. And then I'm just going to cut it out. With this so it's just any sort of template, just to get the right size. So that's four layers, and then what we've got here is just got a ring. This is a small ring. I would probably use a slightly bigger one, but this this is fine for a starter. Just give it a wee spray on the inside, or if you don't have the spray, just a wee bit of olive oil would be great. And then what we do is just fold that into it. And it should be just up to the edge. And that's it, that's stage one done. I say there's not a lot you can do with this, but we'll just throw it away. Right, so that's that part. And now, red onion. You can make this stuff, but it's a nice spot. And you know, it's, it's a long process to make it, slow process. That's just a red onion chutney, um, sort of marmalade type thing. So just one spoonful of that. In the bottom and this is the lovely the combination of sort of you know the, the sweet sharp <coughs> sort of chutney marmalade and then we've got the nice creamy ghost cheese so I've cut this ghost cheese to the right size this is just like a Capricorn ghost cheese you could use a, a crumbly ghost cheese but this is a creamy one so I've just cut it to the right size and I just want to squeeze it to make sure it fits in and just just drop it in That's it, that's it. So I'm gonna pop this in the oven now for probably 10, 10, 12 minutes, but we'll check it after five minutes. Uh, set it at 180. So then I say what I'm gonna serve with it is beetroot, um, some fennel, uh, some a wee tomato, you know, diced tomato, some radishes. Uh, but what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make a quick dressing it's probably the simplest thing in the world to do. This is just a balsamic dressing. So this balsamic glaze, you could use balsamic vinegar, so just a squirt of that. You don't need too much. And then some white wine vinegar. So you want about four times the amount of vinegar. Open the top first come out. Four times the amount of vinegar. Sorry, four times the amount of oil to vinegar. So like a four to one ratio. Um, I'm just gonna get some honey, just like a, probably a teaspoon of honey. That's that. And salt and pepper. I'm just gonna put another wee thing in, a teaspoon of mustard. There's not much in this, so it will be a, a small amount. But you don't need a lot of mustard. Okay. 
and then just probably four times the amount of olive oil. So that's that. Like I say we'll just give it a shake. And that, that'll keep for you, that's a, just a balsamic dress, very, very simple. That'll keep months for you. You don't even need to keep it in the fridge. So that's that, we'll taste that in a wee second. So what else I'm going to serve with it is just a wee creme fraiche dressing. And again, this is probably even easier. All it is is probably a dessert spoon of creme fraiche. Uh, a squeeze of lemon. Just a good, uh, the, the lemon sort of gives it a nice sort of, it sort of lifts the ghost cheese. Um, I'm just going to put some, this is some dill. Sorry, sorry, this is the top of the fennel from the garden. So I'm just going to put some of this in it. And again, it doesn't have to be finely chopped. I'll use any herbs you've got. Chives, parsley, just any sort of soft herb. Just run the knife through it. And just a wee bit of seasoning again. And just mix that together. Just to, just to sort of, the creme fraiche is quite sort of set, so just, just to let it down a wee bit. I'm going to add a wee tiny, tiny bit of cold water. Just to make more of a, more of a dressing than a, like a paste. So that's that. That's, that's the two dressings made for it. Um, and I'm going to actually put some chives in with the French dressing, or the balsamic dressing. And again, that's a simple dressing. You can buy your dressing, but you know, that's how easy it is to make. There's the two dressings to go with it. So then what I'm going to serve with it is just to say stuff that I've got, it's, um, imagine you can go fennel in Ramblestown, believe it or not, I've, I've grown this out in the garden. So raw fennel is beautiful, it's got that sort of aniseed taste, but you need it, slice it really, really thin, you don't want to be biting in big chunks, so just slice it really, really thin and just put it in a wee dish. I'm going to give it a wee squeeze of lemon because lemon goes with quite a lot of stuff. So, squeeze the lemon. And again, a wee drizzle of olive oil. Again, don't forget salt and pepper. So that's another part, so I'll move that out of the way. Uh, what else I've got here? I've got some spring onion. So just some roughly chopped spring onion, that's probably enough. Um, I'll put that in there. I'm just going to go and check the, the goat's cheese that it's not, not burning. No, I'd say it's probably 10 minutes away from being ready, so that's okay. Um, what else? I've got some radishes. Just, I say, I didn't grow any radishes this year. Um, but a friend give me these, so I'm going to use them. So just cut them in a wee wedges. Leave the stock on it. It's, it's all edible. So just cut them in the wee wedges. Um, what else have we got here? Good tomato. A lot of people skin tomatoes. You might see it in sort of fancy restaurants, you know, blanching it and boiling salt and water and then into iced water to peel the skin. You can do it, but I mean, have you ever made a tomato sandwich and took the skin off it? I bet you haven't, so it's fine. You don't need to do that. So we'll just, we'll only do half of this because I think that's all I'll need. So just, just cut it into sort of uniform dice. And as I say, this garnishes with the ghost cheese is entirely up to yourselves. Um, you can use whatever you want, use all of this, use as little, I say, this will go with just a bowl of iceberg lettuce, it is lovely. Um, and last thing is probably one of my all time favourite ingredients, sorry my dog has just entered the, the scene, is beetroot. 
Um, I love beetroot. These are wee baby beetroot that I pickled. Again, it's amazing what you can grow in a garden. Um, the, these these were just picked them very very small, and they just pickled them down. So that's that. And I'll just cut these again in wedges. So that that's all the the sort of stuff to go with it. But this this I mean the. The combination of the sort of goat's cheese, the red onion, so you get creamy, you get sharp, you get um, sweet as well. It, it is a lovely combination. So that's that. This, so it's had five or six minutes in the oven. We will give it another, probably the same again, but we'll go and test it again in a wee bit. And we've got all our garnish to go with the, with the oh sorry, I've got to put some capers in with it. Again, optional extra, you don't have to. Um, but we'll come back to it in a few minutes just to check it. Okay. okay, so it's had 10 minutes in the oven. Again, because it's small, it doesn't take long to cook. Um, 10, 12 minutes max, but it depends what size you make. So I'll just show you what it looks like. And that's actually ready. So we're just gonna turn the oven off. You can see it's sort of golden around the top. It's just come over to the side, but that, that's fine. That will come out nicely. So what we'll do, we'll just let that settle for three, four minutes, five minutes even, just to sort of come back together again um, because the cheese is obviously very hot and it's runny so it'll just come back um, it'll mix nicely with the red onion but we'll just let it settle and then we'll come back and play it up all right so it's had it's settled now um, it's had sort of maybe four or five minutes just to sort of just to come back together so we're, we'll dress it up now so I'll say just whatever salad you've got I just have there's three or four different types here that I've got outside um, Again, presentation, whatever you want. It'll, it'll taste the same, but just if you want to make it look pretty, that's fine. So what I'm going to do, and fingers crossed, I'm just going to set that on there and leave that for a second, let the ring sort of on it, just for, until the last minute. And then we'll go with all the wee bits and pieces. So, again, this is the creme fraiche. Just whatever way you want to put it on. You can put it below the lettuce, so every sort of time you cut into it, you get the nice creamy. Um, and then I said I was going to use some capers. I'll just put a couple of capers in with this fennel. Just gives it that wee sort of sharpness. So again, I just I just dab these around the around the plate. Again, if you haven't got fennel, fine. Just sprinkle them around. That's probably enough. And then these other movements, just again, I'm just going to use my fingers here for this. Just whatever way, basically whatever way they fall on the plate. You know, the more you try and arrange something, sometimes it doesn't look natural. So just let them fall. So it's looking lovely, the colours are fantastic. And then just a few tomatoes. And then we'll just finish off with a few spring onions. So that's it, it I say it doesn't take long. As soon as you, you could have these made in the fridge and then cook them, you know, 10 minutes before you want to eat them. But that's that. Um, and then just the dressing, just give it a wee shake. So I can't remember if I tasted this, so I'm going to taste it now. That's too sharp. That's actually, yeah, it's too sharp. So I'm just going to put another wee drizzle in it. But roughly four to one, four oil to one vinegar. But then remember, I had two vinegars in there. I had white wine vinegar and the balsamic glaze. So that should be it now. And then just, just give it a wee, a wee drizzle round. And I can smell the goat's cheese now. It really does. It smells fantastic. And this is where you cross your fingers and it comes off. So I just, just release it. Yep, there we go. 
So that's it. I, I think that looks pretty good actually, if I say so myself. Um, I will just give the plate a wee clean. So there we go folks, that's um, goat's cheese and red onion tartlet. You could do your own red onion chutney marmalade, that type thing, but you can buy it as nice in the shops. Anyway, it is lovely. Um, phyllo, and then just whatever garnish you want with it. I say here I've got beetroot, radish, spring onions, tomatoes, um, and then two different dressings. One dressing will be fine. Squeeze a lemon will be fine. So if you haven't got all these ingredients, you can still make it. So we'll just give it a wee go here. And again, you can see it's crispy. That's what you want. You want that sort of crispy. So we'll just, I'll take a wee, a wee corner of it. And always with the beetroot. The beetroot is lovely. If I can get one on the, the thing. That's lovely, it really is. The um, You've got the sharpness of the beetroot, that's what I'm getting first. Then the goat's cheese is coming out, it's creamy. It's salty as well. There's the crisp of the phyllo. And then just all the wee bits and pieces that go with it. Really is, but it's a lovely starter. Again, you can make it slightly bigger um, for a for a main course, or just you know that size and just add more to it. But there you go, folks. Just give it a go. It's easy to make. Um, it's impressive, if I say so myself. If you put that down, so I'll get another couple of videos up for you soon. And give that one a try. And everybody, stay safe. Bye.